We've been working quite a bit with finding roots or zeros of a polynomial function. And this lesson we're going to speed up that process a little bit by learning how to divide polynomials. Now the division of polynomials is going to follow much of the same pattern you had when you're dividing integers back in elementary school. If we took an integer such as 384 and went to divide it by 4, we had a simple pattern. Could you divide 3 by 4? The answer was no. Could you divide 38 by 4? Yes, it went in 9 times. Multiplying, that gave us 36. You then subtracted, leaving with 2. Bring down the 4. 24 divided by 4 was 6. That multiplied out to 24. We subtracted and got it 0, so we had a remainder of 0. Dividing these polynomials is going to follow much of the same pattern. The th there are a few things to keep in mind as we go through the process. The first, as we write out our dividend, the number inside, you have to make sure that every degree of, pol of the polynomial is present. So in this one we have a quadratic, a linear, and then a constant term, so that's not a problem. And here we have a linear and a constant, so that's not a problem either. So, putting our dividend in, we have 4x squared plus 23x minus 16, and we're going to divide that by x plus 5. Now, here we're going to have a small departure from what we are used to with integers. When you go through and do your division, you are going to force the first term to disappear. So, looking at it, if I have 4x squared, and I'm dividing by x, how many times could that happen? And the answer is you could divide it out by 4x. Now we're going to multiply just as we did before. And this multiplication is going to be distribution. We're going to take this 4x and multiply it by both x and 5. So 4x times x is 4x squared. 4x times 5 is 20x. Then, just like before, we're going to subtract 4x squared minus 4x squared is 0. 23x minus 20x is going to leave us with just 3x. We're then going to bring down the next term, so we have a minus 16. Now, we start the process over. What is 3x divided by x? And that can go in a positive 3 times. Now multiplying, what's 3 times x? Well, it's 3x. Next, what is 3 times 5? And that is a positive 15. Going through and subtracting these, 3x minus 3x is 0. Negative 16 minus 15 is a negative 31. So we will have a remainder of 31. So it's almost an identical process to what we were doing with integers, just having to keep a few extra things in line. Let's try another one. Again, let's check our powers. We have a quadratic linear constant divided by a linear constant, so that's not a problem there. We have 3x squared minus 29x plus 56 as our dividend and x minus 7 as our divisor. Now going through, what is 3x squared divided by x? Well that can happen 3x times. Notice how important the rows or the columns of the degree become important in this process. Multiplying, what's 3x times x? That's 3x squared, what we were looking for. What's 3x times a negative 7? That's a negative 21x. Now, going through and subtracting these, 3x squared minus 3x squared is 0. Negative 29x minus a negative 21x gives us a negative 8x. Bring down our 56 and start the process over. What is eight, negative 8x divided by x? And that is a negative 8 times. So, multiplying, what's negative 8 times x? Well, that's negative 8x. Next, what's negative 8 times negative 7? And that is a positive 56. We are going to subtract those. 
and come out with zero remainder zero. Any time that you do your long division, you come out with a remainder of zero, then that means that this number here, or this term, was a factor of the original polynomial. So if we were to factor out 3x squared minus 29x plus 56, its factors would be 3x minus 8 and x minus 7. Now if you are left with remainder like we had in the first problem, that doesn't work. But there are other things we can do as we're going through working with these polynomials and practicing our long division. For instance, this gives us another way to check if a number is a factor. So from our previous lesson we learned that if we have a term x minus 1 and it is a factor of an original polynomial then that means whatever it took to make this term 0 would make the entire uh, expression equal 0. So what would it take to make x minus 1 0 and the answer is 1. What would happen if we substitute that in? We'd have 1 to the 5th which is 1 plus 5 times 1 to the 4th, which is 5, minus 1, minus 5. And sure enough, that equals 0. So, just to get a little bit of practice with our uh, long division of polynomials, we're going to now check this using the methods that we've just learned. So let's take it. Let's take x to the 5th plus 5x to the 4th, Notice there's no cubic or quadratic terms, so we have to add those in. And then finish out the problem as is written. And we're dividing this by x minus 1. Now, let's go through and do our division. We're going to end up with an x to the 4th. x to the 4th times x is x to the 5th. x to the 4th times negative 1 is negative x to the 4th. Subtracting those gives us 6x to the 4th, and we're going to bring down a 0x cubed. Now this can happen 6x cubed times. Multiplying, we get 6x to the 4th. Remember, we're always trying to match that lead term. Then subtracting, we're left with 6x cubed, and we're going to bring down our 0x squared. Multiplying again, or dividing again, we're left with 6x squared. So, multiplying through that 6x cubed minus 6x squared, and we're going to subtract these, giving us 6x squared minus x. This can happen 6x times. And we're left with 6x squared minus 6x, and we're going to subtract these, leaving us with 5x minus 5, and this could happen 5 times, and we have 5x minus 5, subtracting those leaves us with 0. So, what happens when we divide x to the 5th plus 5x to the 4th minus x minus 5 by x minus 1? The other factor becomes x to the 4th, Minus, plus 6x cubed plus 6x squared plus 6x plus 5. So these are the two factors of our original dividend. Let's try it with our other one. We have x to the fifth and then a whole bunch of non-existent terms that we still have to account for when we divide by our x minus 2. Now dividing this, we're going to get x to the 4th. Multiplying and subtracting leaves us with 2x to the 4th, bringing down the nothing. Dividing will give us 2x cubed, then multiplying. Subtracting and bringing down gives us 4x cubed plus 0x squared. How many times can 4x cubed be divided by x? Well, that's 4x squared times. Multiplying and subtracting leaves us with 
leaves us with 8x squared. Then bringing down our 0x. How many times can 8x squared be divided by x? And that is 8x times. Multiplying and subtracting leaves us with 16x minus 32. How many times can 16x be divided by x? And that is 16 times. Then multiplying is 16x minus 32. If we were to subtract those, we'd be left with a remainder of 0. So is x minus 2 a factor? Yes, it is. Uh, if we were to substitute in the 2, that would make this 0 into here. 2 to the 5th power is 32. 32 minus 32 is 0. So a couple of ways of checking and working around while we are doing our long division. Now this process of long division is just what it says. It is long. There is a way to shorten the work a bit and compact our answers a little bit more. To show this, we're going to begin by dividing this as we have the last two problems. We're going to take x cubed plus 0x squared minus 57x plus 56 and we're going to divide it by x minus 7. And going through the process and speeding it up a little bit here. will leave us with x squared plus 7x minus 8 and a remainder of 0. Now, there's a process known as synthetic division where we can speed this up. In synthetic division, all we primarily care about are the coefficients that exist in this problem. So if I were to pull out those coefficients, 1, 0, negative 57, and 56, and then what does it take to make our divisor 0? The answer there is 7. If we were to take just this and follow this process, we should come out with the same answer. So the first thing is we bring down our lead coefficient, and that is simply going to be a 1. Next, I'm going to multiply this number what I just brought down by what's up here. So 7 times 1 is 7 and that gets placed here. Then I add that new column. What's 0 plus 7? I get 7. Now multiply what's 7 times 7 and that gives me 49. Then I add this new column negative 57 plus 49 will give me a negative 8. I can multiply that negative 8 by 7, giving me a negative 56. Now adding that last column, I come out with 0. This last number is the remainder. And as you can see, we had previously a remainder of 0. Now the coefficients that are left here become my new polynomial and we have to build it in proper order. This will be my constant, my linear term, and my quadratic. So I would be left with x squared plus 7x minus 8. And if you will examine closely, this is the same thing as what was here. So that is a bit of a process and something completely different from what you've seen in the past. So you are going to want to go through and review this slide again. But there are things we can do with this information once we have this process of synthetic division down. And the biggest thing we can do is what's called the remainder theorem. Now the remainder theorem for polynomials or for synthetic division states if you divide a polynomial p of x of degree n greater than or equal to 1 by x minus a, where a is a constant, then the remainder is p of a. So what this means is that if I go through and do the process of synthetic division, that whatever is in that last location is the value for what I was working for. So a quick example of this, if I were to take p of x, 
which is x to the fifth minus 3x to the fourth minus 28x cubed plus 5x plus 20. And I were to sub uh, want to find p of negative 4, I have two routes I can go about this. I can substitute negative 4 in for all these x values, raise them to the appropriate powers, and evaluate. Negative 4 to the fifth, negative 4 to the fourth times negative 3, negative 4 cubed times a negative 28. It's a long process. Or we can simply set up a long division or a synthetic division problem. Put negative 4 here and then my coefficients. 1, negative 3, negative 28, 0 because there is no quadratic term, 5, and 20, and then run through my process. So bring down the 1 and multiply. Negative 4 times 1 is negative 4. Add those together gives me a negative 7. Multiplying gives me 28. Adding those gives me 0. Multiplying gives me 0. Adding 0, 0. Adding 5. Negative 4 times 5 is a negative 20. And adding those together gives me 0. So what is the value of p of negative 4? It is 0, which means a couple of things. One, uh, negative 4 is a root of this p of x, and that is our answer to the question being asked. So when you have large polynomials, it's much quicker to use synthetic division and the remainder theorem to come out with an end value. So a couple of new concepts and a lot of new math involved here. Make sure you have these down because we're going to be using them throughout the remainder of this unit and moving on into the future.